boys and girls. My name is Miss Lori, and I am a professional time traveler. I was born about 200 years ago, and I've had so much fun traveling through time, but the most fun I had was when I landed in the town of Novato in 1850. Now, you guys are lucky enough because I'm gonna take you time traveling with me. We're gonna go back together to when Novato first started. I'm gonna show you how it became the wonderful town you live in today. And I'm gonna introduce you to many of my friends who helped make this town the town it is today. Now you may recognize this building behind me. Nowadays, this is our beloved Novato History Museum. And it is situated on DeLong Avenue. You may have seen it many times as you've driven by on the street, but it wasn't always here. Back in 1850, when Novato first started, it, along with the few people that started Novato, was over by South Novato Boulevard, by Mountain Mike's Pizza, and the apartments there, and Safeway. There is a creek there called Novato Creek. It's not very big now, but back in 1850, it was huge. And schooners, big boats called schooners, would go up and down Novato Creek from San Francisco and Novato and Petaluma, and it would carry the goods to us that we needed, building supplies, mail if you're lucky enough to get any, and other food and stuff. And it would take from Novato to other people our wonderful fruit and eggs and anything else people wanted from here. Well, that big wide creek called Novato Creek, after years and years and years, started to fill up with mud and sludge. And we had to keep digging that out of the creek so the big schooners could go up and down. It got harder and harder every year. Finally, miraculously, in a year called 1879, something wonderful happened. The railroad came to Novato, but the railroad didn't come by Novato Creek. It came over here by where Whole Foods is. That's where the train tracks are now. So everybody wanted to be by the railroad so they can get their goods and chattel faster and send their things faster. So we all came here. And our beautiful history museum, which used to be the postmaster's house by Novato Creek, got left behind when the rest of us came to be close to the railroad. And over the years, it got more and more dilapidated and run down until finally, in the year 1972, a man named Mr. Bobo, that's a funny name, isn't it? But yes, Mr. Bobo, he wanted to build some apartments right where the postmaster's house was. But he understood the historical value of it, and he didn't want to just plow it into the ground. So he reached out to the town of Nevada and said, would you like to buy it? We said, of course. How much do you suppose we bought it for? If you were to guess one dollar, you would be absolutely correct. So we gave him one dollar and then we put the postmaster's house on a big giant truck, brought it over here, and now we have turned it into our wonderful Novato History Museum, which is filled with wonderful photos and artifacts of time back then. I hope one day you can come and see it all for yourself. I'm sure you have all seen this beautiful house on Reichert Avenue. I think it's so pretty. But back in 1896, when my friend Charles Carlyle built it for his wife, it used to look like this. Isn't time traveling fun, boys and girls? You can see how life is now, and then go back and see it through my eyes back in the 1800s when I was a girl. Now, my friends, Charles and Clarabelle, and here's what they look like, they were the most wonderful friends, but they had a tough life back then, like all of us. For example, bath night. Now, you guys probably have a shower every day, but Mrs. Carlisle had to go to the closet to pull out the bathtub 
oh, and put it in the middle of the kitchen so that her family could have a bath. Now, do you think she could just turn on a tap and hot water would come into the bath? No. She had to pump water from the well, pour it into a bucket. Do you think that water was hot? No, it wasn't. And would you like to have a bath in cold water? They didn't either. So she would have to take the pot of cold water over to the pot belly stove and heat it up. Then when it was hot, she'd pour it into the tub and a bucket's not very big. So she would have to do this about five or six or 10 times to get enough water in the tub. Now there's four people in her family. Do you think she's gonna empty out that tub every time someone has a bath? You're right, no. So she would line everybody in her family up and she would examine them. And she would see who was the dirtiest and who was the cleanest on that day of the week. The cleanest person would have their bath first and the dirtiest person would have their bath last because the clean people wouldn't want to sit in the dirty people's bath water, would they? No. So after bath was done, they would empty out the tub and she'd have to pull it back into the closet. Whew, bath time was hard back then. But they still had time for fun. I know you guys play video games and watch something called TV. We didn't have that back then, so we had to make our own fun. But the Carlisles loved getting together with their friends on Tuesday night to play music. Here's a picture of their musical group. Charles Carlisle is standing in the back under the picture. Beside him, you can see two of my most favorite people, the Kane brothers, Al and Will. They're holding the little trumpet called a coronet and the trombone. Beside them is Carol Atherton. She played the piano. Beside her is Sandy McIntosh with the violin. He's got the funny mustache. We're gonna meet him again later. And beside him is Mr. Beck, the principal of the grammar school at the time. He's playing a little guitar called a mandolin. Well, we're gonna talk about the Kane brothers for a minute. They were so important to Novato. Because of them, the women eventually no longer had to pull their bathtubs out of the closet. Follow me and I'll travel back in time and show you how now. Hello again, boys and girls. Here we are now at the corner of Machen Avenue and Grant Avenue in your wonderful town of Novato. And we're standing in front of a building called Old Town Liquors a place that you guys won't know about until many years from now. But back in the early 1900s, this was a very important building to us. This is where Al and Will Kane started their Nevada Utilities Company. Utilities, that's your electricity, your plumbing, your phone. Back before 1908, we didn't have that in Nevada. But in 1908, People in Nevada were tired of going to visit each other to talk. So Al and Will Kane had heard of this thing called a telephone. They had it down in San Rafael. And they got some money together and they went down to San Rafael. They got some poles and wires and made a deal and brought that up here, dug holes for the poles. And all of a sudden in 1908, you could talk to your friends in Nevada on the telephone. Three years after that, what would three years after 1908 be? If you said 1911, you would be absolutely right. In the year 1911, the people in Nevada got tired of looking up phone numbers of their friends in the phone book in the dark. So Al said to Will, you know what we need here now, Will? It's about time Nevada had electricity. So once again, they went down to San Rafael, made some deals. They came back up with a bunch of poles that they had to dig holes for. And voila, in 1911, you could flick a switch in your house and all of a sudden there was light and you could read your phone book without getting a headache. Well, one year after 1911, which would be 
If you said 1912, you would be right. In the year of 1912, Al and Will are out there digging more holes and they realized they were filthy. But they felt bad because in order to get clean, their wives had to go and pull that bathtub out of the closet. Al said to Will, I'm thinking, Will. Will said, I can see that look in your eyes, Al. You think it's time we brought plumbing to Novato. So that's just what those smart, wonderful, kind, cute Kane brothers did. They went up to the hill behind the History Museum and they dug a reservoir. And somehow, I don't know how, I'm just a farm girl, but they figured out how to hook up pipes and because we had electricity they figured out how to make hot water and in 1912 all of a sudden Novato had plumbing. Well people had to pay for all this stuff like your parents do now so they had to build their little office called Novato Utilities and that's how this building came to be. And thank you Kane Brothers for bringing Novato into the future with light and electricity, which makes light of course, and plumbing and the phone. Now, let's go off to our next spot. <gasps> Hello boys and girls. This wonderful building was part of Novato's very first railroad depot when the train came to town back in that magical time of 1879. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, there's no tracks here. Where are the railroad tracks? Well, you're very clever for thinking that. This building used to be over there on the other side of Whole Foods where there still are tracks and the smart train goes up and down them now. I want you to travel back in time with me to this picture and tell me where you can see this building in this picture. If you guess this building, you're absolutely right. But this isn't the whole depot. The passenger part of the depot, which is where the people riding the train bought their tickets from Charles Carlyle, my good friend, this was the cargo part of the depot. And after the passenger side of the depot burnt down, we, again, didn't want to lose this good building that we could use for something else. So the whole town got together we made a giant wagon. We got all the horses in Novato and we pulled this building from over by the railroad tracks to here and we turned it into a livery stable, which is a place where horse and buggies live. But I keep calling this the cargo depot. Do you guys know what cargo is? If you guessed something you put on a train, you would be right. And most of the cargo from back then in 1879 was fruit and eggs and milk. What would happen is the farmers would pick their beautiful apples from the trees, put them in their baskets, bring them to the cargo depot. Then the train would come and bring those baskets of apples to the shipyards where the ships would take our fruit to eagerly awaiting people in Australia and Europe. And they would enjoy the best apples in the world. And that is no joke. So I still love this building because it helps so many people realize our wonderful contribution to the world through our fruit and eggs and milk. Some of you boys and girls, if you have walked up and down this street or while visiting Whole Foods, you might have seen this little dedication to the railroad. The railroad was very, very important when it came to Novato. This is a replication of the railroad tracks and these things here are the spikes we would put in the tracks so the train would travel evenly and not bounce up and down. Who can guess what this is made out of? If you said iron, you would be absolutely correct. Now we're going to go and learn more about the railroad which really made this part of Novato boom. Well, here we are, boys and girls. This is where all the magic happened. 
This is the reason Novato became bigger and bigger. This is the train station. But boy, have things changed. It certainly never used to look like this. And remember we were just at the original cargo depot where we moved it to over there? Well, that used to be here. And after the passenger part of the depot burnt down, we had to build railroad depot number two. And it looked like this. Now, this picture doesn't look like this building, does it? Well, guess what happened to railroad depot number two? It burnt down as well. But let me take you back to one of the most wonderful days I can remember in Novato. It was in 1903 when they had the opening ceremonies of Railroad Depot number two. Um, and you can see in the picture all of us and the different clothes we wore back then. Didn't look very much like the clothes you wear now, did it? Hey. I just told you I was there that day. Can you find me in the picture? I was wearing a fancy dress, not my regular time traveling clothes. Who's having fun on this time traveling adventure? I know I am. In the year 1917, they built our last station, Railroad Depot number three. Now, we're going to travel back in time to 1930. Notice the train on these very tracks right here. Now the train back then didn't look like the smart train you have now. And we didn't call it the smart train. We called it the iron horse. Iron and horse because horses are fast. So it was called the iron horse. Notice the schoolgirls in the picture in their school uniforms. Do you think they came to the train station to go to school? If you're laughing and saying no, you're right. But you know what? Novato High School wasn't built back then in the 1930s. So these girls had to take the train all the way down to San Rafael where they went to school. This building is called the Flat Iron Building. That's a funny name for a building, isn't it? Let's go talk a little bit more about it and I will teach you why it's called the Flatiron Building. Follow me, boys and girls. You boys and girls are good time travelers and you're doing a great job of following me. As I told you, I was going to explain why this building that we just looked at from the other side is called a Flatiron Building. Well, flat irons are used sometimes to flatten your hair. Back in my day, we used them to iron our clothes and they were kind of shaped like a triangle, like this building is shaped. What is important about this building is remember my friend Charles Carlisle, who had to look for a new job after the passenger depot burnt down? Well, he was something called an entrepreneur and that is somebody who doesn't go to get a job, they make their own jobs. And Mr. Carlisle, or Charles as I call him because he was my friend, he noticed that when the railroad came to town, it was bringing lots and lots of people to Novato. Everybody wanted to be close to the apples that Mr. DeLong and Mr. Sweetser were growing. They wanted to be close to this place where the air was beautiful and the land was fertile. A lot of people brought their sick family members and friends here because the air and the fruit here made them feel better. So people are coming and they are staying here. Mr. Carlisle noticed all these people were building things here and he was wondering where they were getting their supplies. Well, they came from far and wide and he thought, I'm going to make lots of money and I'm going to make these people's lives easier by buying this building and turning it into a hardware store. Because we all know that's where you buy nails and hammers and saws and things, and that's what you need to build a building. So Mr. Carlisle bought this building and turned it into a hardware store and made all the people around here happy, especially if they ran out of one nail. They didn't have to go very far or wait for their nail to get delivered to them on the train. They would simply come to Mr. Carlisle's hardware store. 
Hey, time travelers, do you remember this building? Oh, wait a minute, maybe this will help. Captain Leon here in Barron, and he would ride the schooner up and down Novato Creek. Well, of course, after it filled in with modern sludge and we stopped using it and his schooner couldn't go up and down it anymore, he needed to make money somehow. So he opened up the Novato House Hotel and he opened it up right here, which is also right across the street from the railroad. And this was really smart because when the people got off the train, they were hungry and they were thirsty and they could come right here to Captain Leon here in Barron's Navarro House Hotel, have a lemonade, have one of the juiciest steaks they've ever had because Mrs. Here in Barron would make them and sell them for five cents. And look, there's Captain Leon now, standing in front of the Nevada House Hotel, holding his little granddaughter. I used to babysit her, and she's as cute as she looks. Hi there, boys and girls. You still keeping up on the time traveling with me? Look where we are now. I'm sure most of you have been here for a smoothie, because as you know, this is now your Dr. Insomnius. Back when I was a girl, well, I was getting a little bit older. Back in 1893, Stephen Procello owned this, and it was our fashion shop. Fashion shop is the blacksmith shop, where Stephen Procello banged all the iron over the fire and made the tools that we used. Now, if you look at the photo from when we're time traveling, you could see standing in front by all the tools that he made, the wheels and the farm equipment. There's Stephen Procello standing beside someone else you might recognize, Sandy McIntosh. Where did we meet him? Yes, you're right. He played the violin in the Carlisle's musical group. You'll notice that the front of the building doesn't look like this, what the whole building looks like, but it's a bigger piece of wood where they could write Dr. Insomnia is now, but the fashion shop back then in very big letters. Because you can't write fashion shop in a space like this in very big letters. Now the reason the buildings are like this is because a lot of people came here from back east and other countries where it snows a lot. So they needed roofs like this so the snow would fall off of them. We don't need roofs like that in Novato, but still they built it like this so they wouldn't get homesick. But you can see Stephen Burchella decided to use a false front so that he could have more space than this to write fashion shop. Now also boys and girls, I want you to look at what the fashion shop building looks like now and what it looked like back in the 1800s and you'll notice something missing over the front door. That's right, there used to be an awning there, but it's not there anymore. Other than that, this building looks very similar to how it looked when I was a girl. It makes me feel less homesick for my time. Well, let's talk about the fashion shop for a minute and Steve Vercello. He was a really friendly man. All of Novato loved him. He had a good business. He lived in the fashion shop, but there was one thing that he wanted so dearly that he just couldn't have. You know what that was? Well, girls, let me tell you what it's like inside the fashion shop, and you can see if you can figure that out. Inside, there's dirt floors. It's really hot from all the fire. It's noisy from all the clanging on the iron. And it's really kind of gross because the men clanging on the iron are big and sweaty. Girls, would you like to live in there? Neither did any of us back in the 1800s. But Stephen really wanted that wife. So he thought, and he thought. And then the light bulb went off above his head and he realized he had a good friend in the hardware business. Who was that? Right, you're paying attention, Charles Carlyle. 
Also, I never told you, but Captain Leon here in Barron, besides being a schooner captain and the owner of the Nevada House Hotel, did you know he was also a master carpenter? Well, Stephen thought, I have everybody I know, I'm gonna build me a house and then maybe a woman would like to marry me and live with me. Well, you know what? That's just what he did. Would you like to see the house he built? I thought so. Let's go. That Stephen Burcello was mighty smart. He did get his friends, Mr. Carlisle, to help him with tools and stuff, and Captain Leon to help him build him. And this is what he built. They got married. And then they had a beautiful daughter named Enid. Isn't time traveling fun? <sighs> Hello, boys and girls. I'm glad you're all still with me. Welcome to the year of 1915. That is when Charles Carlyle's hardware store, remember the Flatiron Building? It got too small. All the people building the buildings, I mean, look how Novato has changed. There's cars now. He couldn't sell engines to cars in that little flat iron building. It just wasn't big enough. So he built his brand new hardware store. And people were so happy. And now he is selling refrigerators and ice boxes and stoves and a lot of big stuff. And everybody is very happy. He's still close to the railroad. He doesn't have to go that much further to pick up his stuff, but now he can drive a truck over there. Now, let's not forget Mrs. Carlisle. While Mr. Carlisle gets to come to work and sell tools and appliances to the people of Nevada, she is still up at the Yellow House on Rikert Avenue doing the laundry and looking after the kids. And she got an idea, because she's very smart herself. The women in Nevada were having a very hard time trying to figure out what to buy children for presents when they got invited to birthday parties. And you remember Enid Pacello, her birthday party's coming up, and the kids didn't like getting tools and nails and hammers for birthday presents. So one day, Clarabelle was looking through her Sears and Roebuck catalog, and she saw that you could buy teddy bears and wagons and dolls. And people are also getting married in Novato, and the bride doesn't always want a hammer or a nail for a present. So she discovered you could buy doilies and candles and pretty things. So she asked Charles if she could open up shop in this very front part of the store. Now, it wasn't often that the women of Novato had to come and buy something, but thanks to Al and Will, what do we have in Novato now? The telephone. So, when Mrs. Carlisle was up at the house doing her house chores, if anybody came in looking for her to buy a teddy bear or a doily, Charles would say, why, well, just a minute, please. He would go on the phone, call her. She would walk down from Rikard, uh, click off the dust from her boots, and come in and sell something to her customers. So now everybody is happy in Novato. The men, the women, the children. Already, girl power was starting. If we look at the windows, the bigger ones on the bottom are newer. But if you look up the small squares on top, they're sort of wavy. If you ever come by and walk by this building, you can see they're very wavy. That's because that is the original glass. It's nice to see something from my time still here. Hi, boys and girls. Now we are in front of Mr. Hamilton's grocery store on Grant. You'll notice it's now called Grazi's Restaurant, 
and it doesn't look anything like Mr. Hamilton's grocery store, that's because, like a lot of the buildings and our railroad depots, Mr. Hamilton's grocery store burnt down. And so they built Grazi's restaurant. But Mr. Hamilton's grocery store was a very important place. Now, everybody in Nevada was making money, and I'll tell you how. Remember Mr. DeLong and Mr. Sweetser? And they planted apple orchards and uh, pear trees and fruit trees all over Nevada. Well, at this point, Mr. DeLong and Mr. Sweetser are very old. They got so old, they couldn't manage their giant orchards anymore, so they cut them into little plots. And all the people in Nevada could either own a little plot of apple tree. So when their fruit got ripe, because they owned it, they would bring it to Mr. Hamilton and sell it to him. Now they're making money. And let's say there are some dairy farmers. There's a lot of cows here too. They might milk their cows, bring their milk to Mr. Hamilton's grocery store. Now they're making money. And so is Mr. Hamilton because the fruit farmers who need milk will come here to buy their milk. So now this is called commerce. A wonderful thing in Nevada where all the people are becoming a part of the businesses and they're all making money. So thanks to Mr. Hamilton, everybody in Nevada needs a place to deposit their money. So in the year 1913, Nevada had to build a bank. Do you want to see where the bank is? Oh, I thought so. Let's go. And boys and girls, here we have Nevada's first bank. Can you tell me when it was built? It was built in 1913, and it still looks very much like it used to look when I was a young girl. You'll notice this building is not made out of wood, like Mr. Hamilton's grocery store, which burned down, like the original railroad depots, which burnt down. They got smart. They thought, if we're gonna put our money our hard-earned money into a bank, we're going to build it out of brick and iron because it won't burn down, because a hurricane can't blow it down. For heaven's sake, the big bad wolf can't blow it down. So this is where we put our money and it's still here. Now, Mr. Hamilton, who we just showed you a picture of, Remember what a great businessman he was? And it's because of Mr. Hamilton that we all have money to put in the bank? Well, yes, he might have been a very, very good businessman, but he was paranoid. He believed with all his heart and soul that every night when he went to bed, everybody in town was gonna to come and steal things from his store. He was still clever enough to come up with Novato's first burglar alarm. Do you wanna see how he did that? I knew you would because you guys are having as much fun as I am. Let's go and I'll show you what he did. What Mr. Hamilton did was very clever, I thought. There is the back of his store. This was his house. He lived very, very close, being so paranoid and wanted to keep an eye on his store. And you can see behind me is the window to his bedroom. Now, every night when he went to bed, he took a very, 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 very much longer than this piece of rope to which one end he tied a bell. He would tie the end with a bell to his bed and then the rope went through his window over this parking lot, which used to be a vegetable garden. And in the summertime, he made ice cream from the cow's milk and sold that to us. It was delicious. But anyways, the other end of the rope went through the back window of his store. It went all through his store and he tied it to the inside doorknob on the other end of the store. So that, 
when any burglar came to try to burglarize him, they would open the door, like burglars normally do, they would trip the rope, the bell would ring, he'd jump out of bed, he'd pull on his pants, he'd get his gun, and he'd get the burglars. <laughs> but you know what? There was only one time that I can remember that he was actually burglarized. Not only did he sell groceries, but he also show, sold shoes. And he had a bunch of boxes with shoes lined up at the back of the store. Well, one very rainy night, some hoodlins from Vallejo snuck into his shop, saw the rope, didn't even go near it, and stole some of his shoes. Oh, he was beside himself, but he called the sheriff and those hoodlums were caught and he got his shoes back. But that is the story of Mr. Hamilton's burglar alarm. So here we are across the street from Mr. Hamilton's grocery store at Mr. Scott's general store. You might be wondering what the AD stands for. Well, that's Mr. Scott's, the rest of his name. Alexander Dill Scott. And can you tell me when Mr. Scott built his store? Why, you're right, 1890. Now, it was very conveniently sat beside Mr. Hamilton's grocery store because if you went there to buy some potatoes and didn't have a pot to cook them in, you would come to Mr. Scott's general store to buy your pot and go home and cook yourself a lovely dinner. And here we are, time travelers, because that's what you are now, too. Our final stop of the day, your City Hall. But back in 1896, this was our Presbyterian Church. This is where Charles and Clarabelle Carlisle got married. They were one of the first couples to get married here. I was lucky enough to be the maid of honor. And aside from the opening ceremonies of Railroad Depot number two, this was another wonderful event. You can see the differences aren't that many. There's a weather vane on top of it now, but underneath that is where we used to have the church bell. The church bell and the school bell were two ways of getting people to come together. Let's say there is an emergency. Somebody fell in the well. Somebody might run up to the church bell, ring it, people would come and they would say, what's the matter? And then we would all go save whoever needed saving. Other than that, the bell rang at weddings, it rang a lot at Charles and Clarabelle's wedding, or of course, for Sunday services. So boys and girls, this finishes our time traveling journey for today, and I'm so glad you joined me on it. Isn't it wonderful to learn about your time in a time before it? Isn't it wonderful to learn about the buildings that you see every day and about the people who put them there for you and who made this town for you? And what do we say to people like the Kane brothers who made it possible for you to call your friends and have a warm bath and read your books at night under the light? Well, I just want to say to you all that it has been a pleasure helping you learn more about your town. And I hope when you grow up, you'll be really proud of this town and maybe do something special for it yourselves so that a hundred years from now, I'll be talking about you in my time traveling journeys. For now, goodbye, wash your hands and learn a lot of wonderful stuff.